after that we are going to the benediction. So listen to this song. Yeah, look at 
really like the principle. That's how I'm going to turn that light on. Um, so yeah, so let's stand and let's look at each other, each other with love in our eyes as we say the benediction. And then afterwards we'll sing one of those favorite Methodist songs by us together. So the benediction after three, four. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Today, let us all join together. Hands, if we do that in the street here and sing by us together, or oh, we have COVID restrictions here. Up to you. COVID? So let's sing by us together, okay? Find us together. Again, download it, listen to it on YouTube, 
I shared some new songs with you guys today, Victory Boy, Psalm 91, beautiful, listen to it on YouTube. And this other one, I get back, you know, my cut, take it away. I hope this song resonates with you throughout your week. So, brother, Kern, and I need to let him know that as a local preacher, you must check your preacher's plan or call the circuit office um, every time. And as a soldier for Christ, you on the call at any time, and you must be ready. Um, I must. Well, today I, you may not know this, but I had to listen carefully to him so that when I call my local preachers meeting in April, and he must be there, the only time he cannot be there is either Yahweh take him home. And if he is sick, he still has to be there via Zoom. So we give God thanks and praise for the brother. You will hear more about Kern. I have asked Brother Kern to do youth work. He, yes, um, in the circuit. We'll hear more about it. But nothing happens before it's time. Today we give God thanks and praise for our children. And especially those who will be setting seed this week. Exam is not an easy task, but with God, all things are. And I'm going to ask our children who will be setting the exam to please come forward. Please, I know two of them. One, two, three. No, yes, I know my dear sister, my dear brother. Just kneel on for me, please. Just kneel. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with and still. Lord, I be your living sanctuary, sanctuary. As we then to the Lord God Almighty, we claim passes and we claim things in God's name. And we pray that no doubt, confusion, and chaos. We pray that on Thursday, by God's mercy, when they go into that room, all will be well and, and we sanctify the room that all of them will be in God we come knowing that you are the one who created us we come knowing that with you all things are possible we come knowing that God from the beginning you are God. Yes, Lord. You are our master, yes, our king. Lord. Even now, oh God, as we stand in the gap yes, for our dear brother yes, Lord. and our dear sister, yes, we say, What a mighty and awesome God oh, you are. Yes, God, as they continue with the preparation for sea, yes, you are God already seen. Everything you are God who knows everything you know that they are going to be successful. And so, God, I come against doubt, I come against failure, I come against confusion, I come against chaos, and pray through the power of the Holy Spirit that you may come again now, oh God, and live for Jesus. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. On them. Yes, Spirit of the living God, oh, uplift them. Yes, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, surround them with your love yes, and your mercy. Yes, 
give them the knowledge, the understanding, and the application of God. So that whatever question they arise, O oh God, they can answer those questions with clarity and understanding in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Help them to realize that you are with them. Because you promise I will never leave you, nor forsake you. God, I bring their family before you. I pray that the family may continue to pray for them. I pray, oh God, the school that they attend. The other children of God who will be writing that exam. God, I pray that we may continue to bless all. Yes, Lord. Of yes. yes, Lord. And so, into your hands again, O oh God, I place them. Consecrate them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's blessing be upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's blessing be upon you in the name of the Father, God, we continue to pray for our nation, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Our hearts are aching, oh God, concerning the crime and violence in our country. Our hearts burn within us. In the midst, oh God, of the confusion, in the midst of being disobedient to God. But God, you declared unto us a new covenant I will place in my people, in their heart and in their spirit. A new covenant that I will liberate them with. But Lord God, we have been stubborn and we have turned our backs upon you. Forgive us as we bring Trinidad unto the evil food. We place our president our Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, the High Commander, and others, O oh God, who plays a significant role in the life of your people. God, I pray that you will move our leaders to do the will of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Give them the strength and the courage to hold fast to you. Remember our brothers and sisters in, in to be able to. They go house to send Give clarity to the leadership. And help them to understand it's not about self, but it's all about God. We bring the church, the church universal before you, God. And especially the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. We place before you the connection, all the officers, the eight district, and especially us in the South Caribbean district. Our circuits, and us in the South Trinidad circuit. God, I pray for the ministers, the preachers, the stewards, the counselors, and all our members. May the Holy Spirit of God guide us. May the Holy Spirit of God liberate us. We also remember at this time our schools of learning, San Fernando Methodist and yes, Prince of Stone. Methodist and other institutions, oh God. God, we have seen where the devil is trying to make his way through our school, but God, we come against it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, we stamp out wicked things in our school. And so, God, as our children, the various schools go forward to do their exams this week. I pray for success. In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for your blessing. Oh oh, God. Yeah. That the schools that they are working for, yes, all of them will be successful. 
God, I thank you for the teachers and the sacrifices that they are making. I thank you for the parents and the families that they are coming from. Oh God, may you cover, cover them under your precious blood. May no evil dwell in their path. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And we say, what a mighty God you are. God, I thank you for your spirit, grace upon their life. Look to see how good you are. And so God, as they celebrate, help them to realize where you are with me. We pray for those who are sick and shuffling. Healing God, we declare, cast all the burden, cast everything upon you. And you love us. You are God who declared I will never leave you in your forsaken. As I place all our sick and shut members in the But at this time, oh God, as a church, as a circuit, we become with broken hearts. God, many of us are still frustrated concerning the death of one whom we knew and loved. But ever. God, we thank you for his ministry among his people. Thank you for the way he's proclaimed the gospel of Christ. And even now, God, as we make the necessary preparation, we say farewell until we meet. God, I pray that our dear brother soul may find peace in you. We pray for others who have lost loved ones during this time, oh God. We are God to declare that not your hearts. The trouble of believing God believe also in you. Amen. And so God, we pray that light perpetual may continue to shine upon them as they rest in your loving arms. Amen. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I'm going to ask us to stand as we spend a moment in silence, remembering Brother Ephraim did so. After that moment, we will all say the Lord's prayer. Lord,
and in its place, a Congregational Resource and Development Meeting. This is our Congregation San Fernando will take place beginning at 4.30 p.m. sharp. And I will tell you all why. It was moved from Monday evening, which is tomorrow evening, to today due to other pressing and urgent matters. For example, tomorrow we have visitation. I know Reverend and me and myself, we out in the field from in the morning till after, till about 2 o'clock in the and it's very difficult to come back here for another meeting at 4. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then there are other services, that other things that are happening within the, you know, the circuit and so on. All right, so we have moved the meeting from tomorrow, it was scheduled for tomorrow, to this evening, so that we could discuss the business of the church. And we have an agenda with a lot of things to talk about, you know, about our church and we want people to, be, to come and hear what we are seeing. All right, so I say we'll move from Monday due to other pressing and urgent matters, example, sick and short in scheduled prayer meeting services for, for elderly um, beloved, for elderly, sorry, beloved brother Everett B. Woodson. And please make every effort to attend this very important meeting this evening. All are invited. Matters concerning our church and congregation will be discussed. Now, people might say I'm not a member of the R&D. You don't have to be a, you're a member of San Fernando Methodist. That is the important thing. You're a member of the San Fernando Methodist and you come, you hear what's happening in Methodist. We'll be doing, dealing with all our, you know, accounts assessment, accounts care fund, and, and, and the history of the banner, you know, and update what's happening with the, these accounts and what's happening with our funds and, and moving forward with our cafeteria and all these things. So it will be quite interesting. We'll try to keep it as tight as possible. All right. So I'm looking forward to seeing all our members out here this afternoon. Tomorrow, Monday evening, we continue to push, pray until something happens from 8 p.m. See God work in our church and our lives. It is already happening. I know people are seeing positive things happening. So let us continue Monday evening, Monday night, in our own homes, you know, you know that we have a prayer, we gather our families together and so on. If we are alone, we you know, we get together and we start and we pray. And I know when we finish this evening, it will have a lot of things for us to push for. There will be a lot of things to push for. On Tuesday evening, prayer meeting continues from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. followed by Bible study from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. via Zoom. On Wednesday, our prayer meetings continue from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. So we are not letting up on prayer. We're going to be pushing, 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 pushing. Our Lenten service is held. And we'll be having person on Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. right here in this chapel. And I say, come and hear what the word of God is saying to us. And this is led by Reverend Baker. Come and be blessed. I mean, for the past couple of weeks, it has really, really been interesting. You know, we are dealing with some, some deep, deep topics. Yeah, Very right? <laughs> yeah, well, say, yeah, boy, yeah. It's a very really deep topic, you know, like, dealing with, um, demonic on possessions and all kinds. Of, you know, there are lots of things happening and we take it for granted. Come and hear the word. And when we get to understand that word and what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, we'll have a better understanding of what is taking place. Remember the circuit prayer and fasting is held every last Sunday of the month. Our youth discipleship program is led by Brother Andre Khaled. Please, all youths and young adults, you are invited to be part of this rewarding program. It is held every Saturday at 5 p.m. right here in this chapel. All right, so there are no excuses. Parents, grandparents, siblings, those who are responsible, you know, guardians. Let's get the young people here and let them, you know, 
participate and learn about the word of God and what is said to them. The Faisabad Superior Congregation is inviting all of us to an evening of tributes and reflection on the life of Brother Everett Davidson. And the Faisabad Methodist Church on Thursday, the 21st of March, 2024, from 5.30 p.m. Let us come out in our numbers and support each other during this time. You know, we have lost our dear brother, and we need to, as a congregation, we are having Quite a bad is having a uh, tribute, and they want all the congregations in the circuit to come out in support of that tribute and reflection. And the ongoing service for Brother Davidson will be held on Friday, the 22nd of March, 2024, from 10 a.m. at the Tranquility Methodist Church in Border Spain. And if there are any members desirous of anybody that let us know, in the discharge so that the transport arrangements, I know that um, Faisabad has sent out something, they have four maxis that will be, that will be heading up and the cost is $55 in return, so if you are interested, you need to know that by tomorrow for the latest so that they could know how many people will be, uh, will be catering for on that day. National Women's League rally will be held on Saturday, the 23rd of March, 2024, at the Enterprise Methodist Church from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, for transport arrangement, please contact Sister Mead Murray. Please come out, ladies, and support this annual event. Here. So, anyone who is interested, or the ladies who are interested in going to that Women's League rally in Enterprise, should warn us. Uh, on Saturday, it's from 9 to 2. Please see Sister Me before you leave. Our Holy Week services will be on Monday, the 25th, 2 to Good Friday, and leading up to Resurrection Sunday on the 31st of March. Right? I, I was, I just got some information by sitting there with Rev. So we, He's saying that for Holy Week, well, it begins with Palm Sunday, next Sunday, and then the Monday, the 25th, we'll be having service right here in San Fernando. Time right? It's 6, six right? At 6 o'clock, right here in San Fernando. And so we have a combined service with, with Kel Shaw, um, St. Marlin, uh, Princess Tom and so on. There will be, and each, each night we, we shift location. On Tuesday, we go to Kershaw. On Wednesday, to St. Martin. And then we back here on Thursday in San Fernando for our love feast that will culminate the communion on, on th Thursday evening. And on Friday morning, we have our good Friday morning our service at 9 a.m. And then we you know. Sunday would be Resurrection Sunday, better known as Easter. So we have a, we have a lot of activities uh, for the for this week and the following week leading up to, to Easter and um, and just at the end of just as that is completed, um, I want to remind our congregation again. This is the season for it, March. April is the season when we have congregational meetings leading into circuit meetings. And we have our congregational uh, slash pastoral meeting. It will be held on Tuesday, the 2nd of April, uh, 2024, at 4 p.m. right here in San Fernando. We to keep you informed and as we get closer to these dates. So it's quite a bit of information. I hope people are taking note of, you know, all these deeds that I am calling and all these activities because it's quite a lot, right? I know that the, the, oh no. Mike, Micah, could you put up on the screen some of the events and, and some of the things that are happening? I'm going to...
I know some of these things are built in into the, the right. Yeah. Push pre until something happens. Pray and repent, ask and leave. Every Monday, school up, school. Right? On Tuesdays, all in time, Bible study, via Zoom, right? With all the IDs and so on. Yeah? All in time, season of prayer. Yeah? Continue. Alright? Midweek service. Alright? So the information is here. And so people could get all, you know, the funeral for Brother Eva Davidson. Alright? And tranquility into this church and all the spirit. Alright? The Maxis I just spoke about, 50 dollars per person. Alright? Confirmed by the team, which is tomorrow. Alright? You could contact the, the, the circuit office if you, don't, if, you, if, if you cannot get one to myself or sister Paula. Alright? Our circuit is also developing committee meetings and so on. So thank you. Well, you're listening here, and we now have our tithing and offering. Thank you once again, brothers and sisters in Christ. You all hearing me? Yes, sir. First of all, you know, I, I give a welcome to here one for those who are a bit giving a little late. But I think Brother Kulki, those of you who don't, didn't know him, knew the name, didn't know the person, you saw and you heard. And I think Brother Yeah, I think that Brother Keith has really, really lifted us up this morning. You know, I myself and I reminisce on, you know, Brother Keith, you know, a young man coming. He used to sit at the back, you know, and he would just be quietly and taking services and so on. I know that he has made that, that step forward. Um, I think he's, he's one that the church could really, really, you know, bring to the fore and see what God could do in the life of the youth and, and young adults in our church because he has really, really come a long way. I know that he, he, he did give one of his testimonies this morning. There are others because he had us an incident not long before that one was also a life-threatening one. He will tell that story another time. I'm not going to let that back, let that speak all the back, but you know these things happen and it brings us, draws us closer to God. And I know that these experiences that Tuna Sad has really, really given this young man's life around. And he's one that we feel very, very proud of, you know. Um, Sister Mifu taught him as an infant down at the preschool, and Sister Humphrey and so on, you know, you know, how, how far this has taken us. So, again, I want to thank Brother Kunki for that. You know, inspiring message that he left with us this morning. Yeah? That each and every one of us have to. I'll be listening. Each and every one of us has to do what? Upgrade. I'll be forgetting already. We are in the church and forgetting the word. Upgrade. You know, God gave us another opportunity to, you know, his new covenant to, you know, they are greedy. He has wiped all his sins away and so on. And, and even though we all would have fallen short of his glory and given us another chance to you know, be a child of the living God. So, I again would implore each and every one of us here, and you see how God is working. Um, the, 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 the youths and the children are here with us this morning from Sunday school. I want us again to give what I couldn't keep a resounding round of applause for that good and for you know, the message that we have brought to us. I'd like to say thanks and appreciation 
just like our training system in for preparing the sanctuary for worship this morning, our technical crew and all the young adults and youth for leading in today's worship. And I feel very proud of the, 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 the young people that they continue to persevere and stick with it because um, the young people, you are the future. You are the future. So we put a lot of emphasis and trust and in, in the, our young people to bother Hollis for his live streaming on the virtual platform and his YouTube channel. I know people are watching from as far as UK, the United Kingdom. Right. People who are in the United Kingdom are looking at us when we feel that it's just us internally, people are watching on, right? Many, many miles away. To my fellow stewards, Sister Paula, Sister Paula, and Sister Sylvia, Sister Meeve, yeah, Sister Lynette, Sister Judy, Brother Edison, for your continued support to this congregation. I want to thank you all sincerely for you know support, keeping us supporting. Also, Brother Marcel, Sister Humphrey, yeah, Reverend Gustav. You know, we cannot forget these people you know, that are here Sunday in Sunday out, you know, keeping us, you know, keeping the news of us. You know, they were all mentors. And we have to also mentor the younger ones that are, you know, coming behind. So I want to really thank you all for all that you are doing. Yeah, so we want to thank you all for your prayers and commitment to this church and to the circuit and to the, to the many friends and well wishers and mem members of our congregation sharing their love and kindness to the children, especially those in this on the school. I say thank you. They will know who they are, you know, because it's not everyone waves a flag, you know, from time to time people, you know, do things on the for the Sunday school level. Yeah, refreshment or the green gifts or you know, educational stuff and so on. So they don't want their names mentioned. But members do it and we want to thank them for you know extending themselves yeah, and showing their love and kindness. In our prayers, let, let us remember our connectional bishop Reverend Galbraith, our district bishop, Reverend Derek Richards, our superintendent yeah. minister, Reverend Kurt Bika. Our circuit minister, Reverend Julian Murray, and Reverend okay. Joseph Corvita. And let us remember also our circuit stewards, our congregational care fund and property stewards, and all our lay preachers and circuit staff in this circuit. At this time, I lift up our youth and young adults, our children, and with a special prayer for those who will be writing the SEA examination on Tuesday of this week and all our children right in there in the two exams. So Reverend will lift you all up in this session of prayer later. May God be with each and every one of them during the season. And to our sick and shutting members, Sister Annette, Sister Pearl and all our members on the sick and shutting team and listening, I declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we know there are a lot of people walking around, you know, with pain in the joint, pain in the neck, pain in the back. You know, you might see people coming and sitting. You know, the sister in the left hand just came out of class, but I know it's not 100% healed. And so sometimes we see people and we say, hey, they're looking good, you know. <laughs> you know, that might be just, you know, but no one knows when they in the required space what they are going through. So we pray healing on each and every one of our members. Birthdays and anniversaries. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary today or for this coming week? Sister Carol. Sister Carol is celebrating her birthday. Oh, and Sister Susan. And um, what's your name, Derry? Naima, I, I, she's your grand, yeah, and daughter. I just, you 
you know, some of these young people that are a bit shy, you know, they, they don't speak out much, but... And we have another young lady at the back. What, you celebrated last week? Okay. Another one of... That's your, 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 your granddaughter, yeah. That, that, that we she have in her hand, you can make out. They're growing up so fast. So we have a lot of birthdays. So let's let's do the birthday song for them. Yeah.
Somebody say it again. Who yeah, say it is you? <laughs> My energy up. This morning I'm just going to focus. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be that long because I looked at the time. I don't know if people still have to cook or what, but be going. I'm going to focus on cherry wine. And for the persons who was at um, Kelshall, when I ask questions, no answer. Give the people a chance for another chance. Okay? Okay? I want to hear you, you're pretty nice smile and wearing your blue dress. I want to hear you, and the whole audience wants to hear you too. So do not answer, okay? Okay. You hear the voice? But you are coming to. Who is Jeremiah? No. Remember in church, there are no wrong answers. We all here to learn. We all here to share knowledge so we can become stronger in Christ. Amen? So, drink your water. Prepare yourself for the million dollar answer. What's your name? Oh, look how shy this girl is. Where's this girl name yet? What? Letitia. Who is Jeremiah? Hello, one Letitia, please. This is young people. I know they're young at heart. Letitia, that's, ah. This man, when this young man, when he walked in here, he reminded me of voice. Didn't find you have a look like voice? You came in here with the shades on, and you were walking, confident. I was like, yeah! Young man, what's your name, sir? Nathan. Hear that deep voice? <laughs> what is it? Nathan. Nathan? I know you are a baby. I know you have a deep voice. Who is Jeremiah? See? See how the church need to work together? See? No wrong answers. See how all of us need to work together? I ain't asking nobody to work together. But since you put up your hand, and you have, and you have on a nice polo shirt, you can you throw that shirt? Yeah? Who is Jeremiah? A prophet. Is he correct? Yes. Jeremiah is a prophet. You gave an interesting um, answer just now. Who is Jeremiah? A weeping prophet. A weeping prophet. I didn't get a weeping prophet today because against time, but that's one of the um, descriptions. A weeping prophet. Jeremiah is a prophet. So if Jeremiah is a prophet, when he's saying these things, he's foretelling. Yes or yes? What he just spoke about there. Who read Jeremiah? Which one of the young persons read Jeremiah? Yeah? He's foretelling. So he's telling us of what is happening now? Uh huh. Or when that new cover is supposed to come into play? He's talking about a new government. This is Jeremiah. He's a prophet, we agree with that. And he, we just read it. We give a lastly round of applause. So he's talking, he's foretelling, but when? Last year? Or no? No, right? No. Some interesting facts about Jeremiah that you should learn. Nathan. What's your fancy name again? What's your fancy name again? Letitia. <laughs> Jeremiah has the second largest book in the Bible. You know that? Okay, since you know that, who has the largest book in the Bible? Who? Anybody knows? Come on. No wrong answers. Isaiah. So Isaiah and then Jeremiah. How old was Jeremiah when he got his calling? When he understood? He was very young. He wasn't a teenager yet. How old was he? Twenty? You told him. Yes, he was 20. That's the research that I got. It may be different, but that's 
you said that he was 20. But what I'm saying is, I said all of that just to understand the history of Jeremiah and where we're going with this. So if Jeremiah's prophet was foretelling, it's kind of similar, let's just say, it's like slavery. We are the dreams of our forefathers, yeah? So Jeremiah was foretelling of what is happening now in the new covenant, yes? We get that? We still there? And it became, the un it was an understanding through God. How does God speak to us? Quick example. If I ask you, how many persons sitting in this seat? How many persons sitting in this seat? Okay, good answer. How many persons sitting in your seat? How many persons sitting in your seat? Two or one? Or three or four? Two? How many persons sitting in your seat? One? Mm. How many persons sitting in your seat? Your set. Ah, we're getting there. We've been, we've been profit. We're getting there. You hold on. You hold. We pump in. Some of you said one. Some of you said two. Now we're culture. We had a big debate. We separated the whole church. Some people who say one went on this side. Who said two went on this side. And we're going down the line. We're debating now. When you sit. If I ask you a question and I ask, answer it in your mind, is that one person or two persons? There's somebody else in there. Some of us refer to this as the mind or the subconscious mind. That person, young people especially, is who I want to speak to. So if I ask you your name, what is your name? And I want you to answer in your mind. What's your name? You answer that in your mind. You ever talked to that person before? You talk to that person? Say, so you're mad then? Yeah. yeah, mad. You have to be some sort of mad. You're not normal. You have to become connected with that inner person inside of you. And that is what God did. He spoke to Jeremiah. And he understood. That is what God did with me when I was in the water. He spoke, but I understood. It was already in me. So God is within all of us. And that is really much what the new covenant is really saying. It's now internal. So what is the new covenant? My next question will be, well, Where's the old covenant? Let us shout. I'm picking on you today, Gil. What is the old covenant? Let us shout. We're working on you. Picking on you too. I don't want to make your mind. What is the old covenant? Anybody could answer now. What is the old covenant? The Ten Commandments. See how easy that was? We all learned. The Old Covenant was the Ten Commandments, which was more law. Thou shalt and thou shalt not. And more law. External. Don't do this, don't do that. This one was more internal. A more of a, 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 a better binding agreement. All of us have cell phones here. What type of cell phone you have for that? Okay, let me, let me watch. What type of cell phone? Let's be like, it's Android. All my Android people say, wait, wait. All my Apple people sit down. We don't want to hear anything. We don't like Apple here. I'm team Android, okay? When you have these type of devices, don't we upgrade them? And every minute the access will upgrade your software? Would you keep your old software? You have any PlayStation, Xbox, anything? P2. P2? You have P2? You have PS2? And it is upgrade. So this new covenant is an everybody said to me an upgrade. An upgrade. We won't really go back too much to use any old things. We'll use this new one, this new covenant, an upgrade, something internal. And internal now with grace. Everybody say grace.
Hear how it's in Taylor. It says, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Persons came up to the and told you how they feel from where? So you see why you give them a round of applause? Because it's the connection with God. Persons will tell you what's on their mind. Because why? It's the connection with God. It's the what? The new covenant. That's how we are governed today. The new covenant. Internal. God is always with us. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Ay, ay, ay. Now he said, sir, man, don't drop my book. Give me a round of applause. I'll drop you mine. Why? I don't have to say anything again. I will be their God and they will be my people. I'm going to break it down for the young people then. If you roll in and God is at your side, the biggest, the best in every single thing, how would you be? If you're going out and you know God at your side, how would you be? You, Blanche, yeah, I'm watching you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, get that man around the applause. <laughs> I want to say confident. But sometimes it's strange to me why people in this church, if we know God is at our side and we are His people, how come some of us don't walk around confident? How come some of us like to talk lack? How come some of us like to be negativity? How come we like bacchanal and scandal? I will be their God and they will be my people. Ladies and gentlemen, God is always with us. This idea that if, and it hurts me when people of the church, I can kind of accept it for people outside. When they talk negative or if it's to do something for the church, you know, if it's to read, and I don't want to read, I read last week. If it's to testify, or why do you know I don't really want to testify? Huh? We are God's people. God is always with us in our going out and our coming. Amen. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? No I'll say it again. If God be for us, who can be against us? No if God be for us, who can be against us? God. Amen. Amen. That is the attitude we have to walk around here with. Not only in the church, you know, when you go out there. When I walk into a place or a building, bet your bottom dollar you have to feel my presence. I promise. Because why? I am confident. I am happy. Do not walk around like if God is not on your side. God said it here. And you, government, you, the, 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 the Jeremiah prophet, foretelling it. This is what it is going to be. We have upgraded ourselves. But yet still, some of us, not all of us, and maybe not this church, but I'm sure we can identify with persons who get in line, they don't have, they, they've never been upgraded. They speak loud. What are you talking about? That is not in my life. Get away. Because I learned that he said, he, I, he, he, I will be there. And they will be my people. So please, walk around with a different type of energy when you come to church, when you go through your work life, when you do go to school, when you interact with people. Let people say, hmm. Something different about this young man or young woman, you know, he woke up with a little extra pep in his step. And when they ask you, but how oh, you happy so Letitia? But how oh, you always smiling in church, Letitia? What you tell them? Oh, say, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I would have made this lesson understandable. I would have hoped that I would have made this lesson that you can share it with not only members of the church, the ones who didn't come, but persons who have no idea of church, tell them, hey, I'm a young preacher, man. They call them good kids. That's the best sales, man. That man preacher kind of word did that. I think you should hear. I think you should come to me to this time. Just listen. There's room for all of us. God's grace is sufficient for all of us. God wants all of us. God wants to continue to work in us, through us, by our beautiful minds and our wonderful hearts. It's been such a pleasure sharing with you this morning. I hope you enjoyed my little sermon. I am I'm not sure what time it is. And that has been the end of my sermon this morning as we move on to something else. Can everybody say amen? amen. You still with me? Yes. I will never get a round of applause. Thank you. And we got five. I come with five. 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 Upgrade. Upgrade. Upgrade, sir. Upgrade. 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 We find out who wears this. Upgrade. Upgrade. Upgrade, big man. Be fed. Upgrade. Upgrade. Let's upgrade our lives. Let's upgrade the church. Upgrade. Big man, be back. Upgrade. 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 Anybody didn't get an upgrade? Upgrade. Yeah, you upgrade? Again. You want that? I think anybody you upgrade. 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 I think I'm an entry one to sound. All Methodist congregations. Upgrade. 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 Keep it coming. Upgrade. Keep the energy. Upgrade. 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 You're giving your trouble and work. Upgrade. You're talking about a lot. You upgrade. You're not making enough money. Upgrade. You want to better education. Upgrade. It has been given fast. Upgrade yourselves. Such a pleasure to be here. I love it. And I love each and every one of you. What's next? We're going to sing some more? Let's sing a song. What's next? After sing one, now it's time for the notices and offering. After which, we'll have a prayer of intercession. Okay? Upgrade. Notice it, ladies and gentlemen, children, boys, girls, children of all ages. Whew.
they just cut up face their maybe fears, false evidence appearing real, settle their nervousness, and just read the word of the Lord for you. Wonder what type of encouragement we can give them. <laughs> you have people, you keep on giving them encouragement. What do you guys do when they get encouragement and a round of applause? Keep it up. Thank you. It's about my God. Yes, and as they go back to their seats, let's continue to give them a round of applause. Yes, young people, come down. And let's be round of applause for this Anna and the energy of blessing because they need encouragement. Give it to them. How much time do you have to Oh, God, look how you just want to walk in. Look at the kind of music you just listen to. Look how it is this. They now read the word of the Lord, and everybody just, hmm. Hmm. And you have it in your head. You see, look at his smile. Tell all about his smile. What his smile? <laughs> look what the encouragement did. That is what we want to have in our church people. When I come on young people Sunday, it's going to be a little different. When a young person come up and they finish read, make sure you can keep saying, let me give them a round of applause. Amen? Amen. Make sure, since you always lead it, or they make sure the drummers make sure or they get all the wrong of applause. This is all your Sunday young people, you young people. We are using it, we not old well. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> make sure and they get all the wrong of applause. So we move on to the um, the sermon and the word. But before that, I would like us to sing this song, I Know Who I Am. Anybody knows that song? Mm-hmm. Ashok, Adana? Yeah, you know that song. You, you <laughs> look so, you're your brother, I can sing that. You, you know that song. So let us stand as we prepare ourselves for this word, this sermon that I'm about to give. And let us sing lastly, I Know Who I Am. Yeah? Cue music. Mm. Two, get me. Um, to all the young people who just came up and read, please come forward. All the young persons, come forward, please. Yes, come, 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 come. Good, be shy. Yeah, stand by. Yeah. Anybody miss it? Yeah. My car. Come now, leave that. You're going to that just now. We need the up in front, please. The Gospel reading is taken from John 12, verses 20 to 33. Glory to you, O Lord. Here we get every day. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. <coughs> Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, they will my servant, my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. 
below. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5. This is 5 to 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he had suffered. And having been made, made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all, for all who obey him. Having been having been de designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. that he has carried him through and I have faith in the Almighty that he will 
make him arise. And his desires will be fulfilled. As Colonel talked about his workplace, I remember the song One Canoe. If you catch hell, don't hold it. And if you're going through hell, don't stop. The enemy has a way of distracting you from God's destination for your life. And I was telling Miss Humphrey this morning to pray for me. Because I never wanted to teach everybody who knows me know that. I come from both sides. Everybody will know of educators. And I never wanted to teach. My aunt's husband came in front of my gate and sat. I was given to my testimony the other day. He sat patiently. He was still. Because he said, so is this a contract, contract, contract you're doing? It doesn't make any sense. You're qualified and you can afford to get an income that is still. I did daddy. I never took her bath as long as I did. But he waited patiently for me. We went up, got my number. Two prominent schools in Poland Spain called. I, you know, I, I told them no. And then I went, when I got Princess Tom secondary call, I said, okay. Oh, let me say, how much people you say no to? In that school, I started in 2002, August. My grandmother was a source of strength for me. My children said I would get a steady job. August 2002, I got that job. And November 17, 2002, my grandmother died. That was a real blow for me because I thought that I would be able to make sure I go places with my grandmother. I can remember when I had to do any course when I wasn't working and my grandmother would have the money to answer, Sue's girl, go do this course. Brought you, put the money in my hand. I would go to the course and she was gone. I said to myself, God had to help me there for a purpose. I met my husband in that place. And when persons thought that my womb was going to open, I always remember that I asked God to get married at 21. I have three years in my life. Because that is what my parents did. My mother got married at 21. And three years after I came. In my life, 21 came and it went. 31 came and it went. 37 came and I was married. When they called me barren, I will never have you. I got married. I got, I got married in 2009. And it was in the of December, the 20th of December, 2012, my first son was born, Kenichi, which means praise God. I also thought to myself after all those years of being Princess Tom that God wanted me to see about the children. Hence the reason I locked my hair, because I thought that they would see somebody like them achieving, caring for them, loving them, being patient with them. So they would aspire to that. Only to only get fat down, fat down, and fat down. 2004, I applied for the I wasn't accepted, because the principal did not recommend it. 
I said, I don't have you. Have me. I said, no man could hold me back. But I didn't know she didn't recommend me. No, she didn't recommend me. I went jolly to Yui with the envelope on seal. I mean seal. And I delivered. But the Spirit of the Lord said, go do a course. And I went and I did something. Then I applied again. And jolly I went to deliver the envelope unopened. And I was not accepted because the principal did not recommend me. And she would recommend everybody else and they go in on their way. I finished my course. I applied again about four times. I was stuck in a course that I'm doing. And I only know that God is my religion. It is that people see you and they don't know your struggles. It came a time, come a time now that after all that I have been doing, God has promoted me to act in I am no have depend. But somehow at the beginning it was the best and, and, and whatever qualified. But the Lord opened the way and it's not having the best, but it's being senior. And I've been acting for over two years now. But there are sharks in the ocean. And it came to the past that I dealing with people, children, praying before I start any prayer and conference making sure that at the end of the night build everybody up and they leave with God and feeling empowered. There, there's a situation about last month, but the truth, I, the time is going and I just getting fed up of it. There's a particular lady who got dipped dishonestly. She wasn't qualified to do it, but the principal released her, recommended her, and she's there. I had a case where you know, she was dealing, she, her cousin was a principal and because when they asked if I would accept the position, they expected me to say no. And I told them I will think about it. And the Spirit of the Lord said, take it. And when I went to the principal and I accepted it, she said, you know, there's plenty work I said, miss. It is nothing that I have not been doing since I have been teaching. only to realize that she wanted a cousin to get a position. So she made up a position called assistant dean. So the cousin would be there. I am there in the capacity doing what I have to do. So I did. I heard her. She was, in, she was instructed by her, by her dean that she's working with to be able to Deal with the four months. So she was filing all the information. I saw one of my students and I got up. I went to the conference and I spoke about it. And then there was another student who was at Form 6 who was involved in the act. To me, everybody's supposed to be equal. And whether you're Form 1, Form 3, Form 6, if you did something wrong, you're supposed to be able to stand up for it. Only to realize when I dealt with it, she was offended. Right now I'm in front of a tribunal where they even call in the SS3 to speak to me. Because I will not back down and I will stand up. The lesson in this is that let God fight your battle because I'm fed up of it. I'm still going through the journey with my studies. And I know to myself that that came as a distraction. A distraction that I will be able not to praise God and focus on my son, who will be successful in the name of Jesus in his SA exams, and me in my studies. Also a distraction for me not being able to do the projects when Ms. Humphrey so helped me to fund and some other members in the church to help the children to get a focus. Because the current project now is the 4-H club, which they are, they are anxiously planting pine, peas, purple, and the water in the plants coming to see about them. 
God's children are supposed to be guided by His people. And we need to pray for our people who are in positions and will be in strategic positions to be able to govern and to guide and to pour in to our nation's children. This is my testimony for all those who are battling the enemy. Of all those who are on clean spirits, and of all those who are not under the anointing of the Almighty. For he said it will fall, but a thousand shall fall at thy side, and thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. But it feels that it is as close when you are going through hell. But if you get hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes!
Oh, you beautiful smile. Um, it was such a marvelous time at Kelp Show that we ran in. They didn't want us to leave. They were singing over and over. They were just begging us to stay out to tell them, hey, I have to go down to San Fernando. So San Fernando, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, let's try it again. I want to hear you guys loud on TV and camera. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, what a pleasure it is to be here worshiping with the young people. And this is all the people in front of me here. A friend, he was at a kelp show this morning. And you know I don't like young people to sit down in the back. Yes, you and your friend come forward. Young man with a nice plaid shirt, come forward too. Yes. What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, what happens? So I'm singing a song, the world come. So this is Young People Sunday, so things are a little bit different. My name is Kurt Keith, if you didn't know, I normally worship at St. Martin Methodist Church. I come in with our whole vibes and energy. Can everybody say amen? Amen! Yes. Yeah. Ooh, the drama is all coming on the scene here too. We're going to have a good time. So, yes sir. We are about to enter the peace and worship. Yes. Right? At you up front. Uh -huh. Please lead us. Please lead us. Now, I told you all we had a real good time in Kelchon. Any choir members in here? Who say no? Okay, so that means all of us here in the choir. Can I get an amen? Yes. The first time I started off at Kelchon, well, I seen fire, fire on the screen. But I want to ask us, because I have a little notes I'm prepared. Reverend say I had to preach two things, so we're right, coming out. I want us to know, take part now on this question, how do we serve God? How do we serve God? And with that, I'm going to bring in my first song, and I want you all to help me. What a mighty God we serve! Oh, my God. 
this point in time in my order of service, I had testimonies. We just had a beautiful praise and worship where we spoke about what a mighty God we serve. We lift Jesus higher in I ain't too much like this mic thing, yeah? I will throw my voice. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yeah. I want to stand up. I want to please. I want to move around in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Just come and just stand up one place and talk and tell you. Yeah? I like that. I change it like that. <laughs> check one, two, again. Can you hear me No? All you may. Ah, check one, two. Beautiful. Yes, so I was at um, testimonies. In every church that I go to, and I'm asked to preach or lead or whatever, I will always make room for testimony. Testimonies, or a testimony has touched my life. I remember when some man, when they say testimony, I would start to get scared of You want to go on to until that one testimony touched me. And from that day, I never missed an opportunity to testify of the great works that God has done in my life in the past, that God is doing my life in the present, and what God will do in the future. I want to make that extremely normal in Methodist that we must be able to come up and testify. So, I'll make it easy for you all here this morning. I will give the first testimony. And I will implore any one of you all to come out and give your testimony as well. Sometimes a good testimony, you may not even have to hear the preacher preach. Based on how powerful a testimony can be. We all want to know how God is working in our lives. You must be able to. There's nothing. That you must be able to come up and boast and be boastful about how God is working. At it. From the little things to the major things, it adds fuel. How long are we going to continue to watch the news when they kill that one or they shoot this one? Or to kidnap this one? How long are you going to allow that to bombard your mind? When they bombard your minds in, in work and in school and they come to church and they come to church and they, I just come to church. No. Wherever I go, I'm going to change that attitude. You come into church from the time you open that door and you walk in. It must be they must feel something in it. They must just rejuvenate. They must become alive. That's the power of God. That's what God did to me. I have one of the greatest testimonies I can give. And I will give it over and over and over and over and over again. Because God continues to work in my life. Here's one of the big testimonies that you may or may not be familiar with. April 27th. 2023, coming from a work event in Port of Spain, I got into a severe accident. An accident that when the fire officers and police officers and stand by, look at the they say, nah, nobody in that car, that car dead, the person in that car dead. They write report fatal. <sighs> I am sure the accident was so vague. It made newspapers, a man get an award for it as well for coming to quote unquote rescue me. It was where a car turned over in the car in the river and a truck driver jumped out and pulled out. The person in the vehicle was me. But let me tell you something. What was an hour and 45 minutes to normal people? In the presence of God, there is no time. Forget that. So, coming down the highway, late at night, that was a week of rain. The road was wet. 
saw a car in front of me. I said, boy, I in the middle lane, kind of right lane, left lane free. I said, I'm going to pass this car. But when I pass the car, so I'm going to tell me, just flash my lights. Just to let them know I pass. You ever did that before? Flash the lights to let them know you're passing. All right, flash the lights. Click, click. Everybody say, click, click. click. Flash the lights. Click, click. After that, that person, I don't know if that click, click was for them to come in my lane. They turn on an indicator. They make a signal. Your boy coming home because he just went on a wall for most improved sales. Couldn't eat hashtag the best salesman. And I'm coming down the road. Click, click. The person pulled. What are you going to do? Me want to hit that car. So I do the same thing. I pull. When I pull, the car danced. I feel like I was ice skating. The car became light. I couldn't control it and it spin. The car hit an embankment. Whoop! When I in the air, I say I had an accident again. I'll tell you about the first accident afterwards. I had an accident again. And it hit the water. Bam! Underwater. I say water too. Now I'm upside down. I in water. I don't know what is left, what is right. All my senses are gone. What happened? I became still. I can't see, I can't hear. If I only open my mouth too much water coming in. I had a little puppet so and I'm up underneath it, just breathing. I told myself to remain calm. And here when I, I make a promise to God, I said, God, if you only get me out of two. You know when they shut off a TV? Just so I did it by two. And I understood. And you will read more about understanding. I understood. God said, don't make promises to me. Don't promise. Do not promise. We are even do not promise to God. You know what he said? Be still and wait on him. Be still. And wait on him. So I obeyed. I was still. And I told you what was five minutes, it felt like five minutes to me that I was underwater gasping for breath, being still. Not knowing it was an hour and 45 minutes. Hour and 45 minutes. They write me off. No way a person could survive that accident. No way. So I was still. I listened, I understood, because he's in within all of us. I understood. While being still, I hear a voice. They tell everybody inside there. Yeah? That was the truck driver. That was when I started to, okay, I can now do something and try to climb out or do something because I had traveled and I was underwater. They tell everybody inside there. Eh? Yeah! You can go on YouTube and see the whole video. <laughs> Fast forward, end up climbing out. I asked the truck driver after we the recovery what made him come in the water. Police watching, ambulance watching, seeing fire and coming in. What made this gentleman come in the water? What made him come in the water, I want to let you all know, is inside all of us. He said, he heard a voice. The voice, he just want me to finish work 2 a.m. The voice tell him, jump in your truck and drive down the road until the car drive no more. He want to know why, when it's 2 a.m., he tired, he just want me to sleep. He did that, he listened to the voice. Jump in his truck, drive down the road. Obviously, traffic can be seen. You know how we like to It's like to get everybody pull aside and just watching this car now. water. He realized the weight is greater than something. Tell him, come out the truck. He come out the truck and watch it. Someone said, talk to him again. Ask a question. And that is when I realized we are all instruments for God. We are all instruments for God. 
All of us may play a different tune, but it's God's greatest orchestra. You hear what I'm telling you? We have all instruments for God. We all play a different tune, but we are all part of God's greatest orchestra. So my message today in everything that I do, I remind persons first when I come to be still. Too much noise, too much rah rah rah, too much things taking away our attention. When you come in the house of you, Lord, take off your cell phone, put away all distractions. All who talk in your bad and work, all who want your death, all who want your money, all put away all distractions. Leave it by the altar. When you walk in the church, in any Methodist church, when you walk, feel the energies of the forefathers who came before. Amen. You hear what I'm telling you? Amen. You hear? And that is why I am here today. That is why I testify. Because I was in the presence of the Lord. He told me, carry out this message. Be still and wait on him. That is my testimony. That is just one of the testimonies that I can give. There are many testimonies within us here. I open the floor while the music victory boy plays in the background only for anybody to give a testimony. It doesn't have to be so emotional like mine and close to them. It can be simple. Every single thing that I used to sing me about, I give thanks and praise to the Lord. Before the accident to it, if you see me walking down the street and you find a little bit of telling, well, hey, it's God. If you see man, I come close here and I give you a hug, but can you smell good? I said, yes, God. Can you? You improved on your sales. How did you do that? With limited stock and people don't like you and negativity. I said, well, it's not me, it's God. I am just an instrument. I am just an instrument in God's greatest option. This is my time of my testimony. Sam, when I know that this person, I love you. Play my victory, boy. So in the background, let somebody come and give my testimony.
come to you to say I love you. My desire is to live for you and you alone. You are my strength, my rock, and my deliverer. We praise you for not only who you are, but who you have always been, and who you will continue to be, the God of the universe. I surrender my heart to you, the God of the impossible, for whom nothing is too hard. Lord, my Father in heaven, I worship you. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Dear Father, we humbly come before you with grateful hearts, praising you with all our being, for we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you, the one who never changes. We recognize those good things, both large and small, with which you bless us, but we also recognize our forgetfulness in giving thanks each and every day. Forgive us in our humanity, Lord. May we learn to thank you for the good and may we trust that the evil to be made good by you. For you are going to be worthy of our praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all of our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. The burden written us our sorrow for the wrong we have done and the good we have left undone. In Jesus' name, Amen. We now sing hymn number 183, To God Be the Glory.
We will now say what a man. 